wear all your favorite hats at the same time? Well, we wouldn't either. That is why we suggest you use only what you need. Switch off all electrical appliances and lights in a newsroom. Remember, use only what you need and save power today. Switch and save. Zesco, powering the nation. Apple Max. Take it to the max. Want to just get out of town with your friends and family? Are you having a corporate getaway and have no adequate transport? Then this here is what you need to listen to. A brand new 35-seater Yutong luxury bus is now up for hire at an affordable and negotiable rate. It comes fully equipped with aircon, TV for your relaxation, music soothing your trip, and DVD players to give you variety. Book now by calling 0955. 0966 or 977 What makes the new Yo Yo Chipsy so unique? 100% natural ingredients. Nothing artificial. So free, so let's chill. Have a drink with a guy like me. A quality product from Californian Beverages. TV's main news to present it. My name is Gwen Miller. To begin, we take a look at some of the stories that are making headlines. Observer missions in Zambia, happy with political environment. Remain calm, Dante Saunders advises Zambians. Ed Galungo's PF leads in 90 constituencies counted. And in international news, UN says international court needed for Central African Republic war crimes. For more on these stories, do stay tuned. the news in detail. The Electoral Commission of Zambia, ECZ, has announced results from 90 constituencies showing PF's Ed Galungu with 590,252 votes representing 50.75%. P, uh, 
PF Lungus is followed by U UPND Hakainde Hichlema, who is standing at 524,976 votes, representing 45.14%. Nevas Mumba of the MMD is following with 8,831 votes, taking the third position. The other votes, votes are now being shared by other political parties. ECZ Chairperson Irene Mambilima said there are now 60 constituencies remaining to be counted. Justice Mambilima announced this during the briefing of the election results at the Mlungushi International Conference Center. She adds that voting is still going on in some selected polling stations. Preliminary 2015 presidential elections have been described as free and fair. The Electoral Institute for Sustainable Democracy in Africa says so far the observer mission in the country is satisfied with the political environment it has seen. ISA President Kasam Oten says from the time the team arrived in the country, it has observed that the atmosphere was and still remains conducive for holding an election. And Mr. Otam, who is also former president of Mauritius, has commended the Electoral Commission of Zambia for effectively handling the elections considering the little time they had. Mr. Uten said this in a statement at a media briefing held in Lusaka on Thursday afternoon. Commission found that this electoral process was largely peaceful with deposed incidences of conflict and violence within and between political parties. The response of the ECZ and the Zambia Police Service to these incidents was sufficiently timely and measured enough to manage the situation and maintain a generally peaceful atmosphere. Meanwhile, EISA director based in Mozambique, Miguel Bruto, has clarified that there is nothing wrong with stakeholders conducting the parallel voter tabulation PVT system. Mr. Bruto says what is only wrong is people posting wrong figures which might mislead the general public. He says PVT is healthy in any election to have independent views from those of the ground and national totaling center. Not right to because legally the electoral commission is not going to be announced. So from our side as an election observation, our appeal to those who have collected PVTs would be do your PVTs, keep your results. Once the electoral commission announces the results, make your comments based on your final calculation. Do not try to compete with this event. The Southern African Center for Constructive Resolutions of Dispute, SACOD, has praised the Electoral Commission of Zambia for the professional manner it has continued to exhibit in the elections. The center has also commended the people of Zambia for exercising their right to vote, demonstrating mature democracy. SACOD Executive Director Bonfest Chembe says it is gratifying to note that Zambia is moving to a different and mature level of democracy in the way people conducted themselves during the voting period. Mr. Chembe has, however, stressed the need for political parties to show, to show restraint from one another once the election results are announced and the president is declared in order to promote peace happy that we are moving away uh, from such a, a politics and our encouragement or our appeal going forward is that our, our leaders can focus uh, on that. We are also pleased with the fact that uh, uh, when uh, the campaign period came to an end, uh, our leaders um, actually adhered to our electoral laws by, by not um, uh, campaigning, which is encouraging because it shows that they are able to follow our lay down procedures, respect uh, our laws and ensure that they participate uh, in uh, the electoral process that uh, is uh, given or is provided for, if you will, by our electoral laws. And this um, can also uh, reflect in the fact that uh, the voting process was largely characterized by peace, uh, which is what we want to see as a country and as a nation, and that uh, even as we begin to wait for the votes or the final uh, count uh, or some other parts of the countries to vote, and the final um, uh, votes to come in uh, uh, through the Electoral Commission of Zambia, our appeal is that our political leaders will show restraint, uh, will show patience, and will show respect uh, for one another. 
A political activist says there is no need for political parties to panic when the final election results have not yet been announced. Dante Saunders noted that the anxiety exhibited by some political parties during the announcement of results is not necessary as the tallying of votes is still in process. Mr. Saunders has called on political party leaders and their cadres to ensure they wait for the final results announced by the Electoral Commission of Zambia so as to uphold peace. He has further caution the parties and their cadres from celebrating premature victory. There's no need really to panic at this particular point in time. I, uh, from my own assessions, uh, even my uh, walking around uh, monitoring all the uh, polling stations, everything looks uh, a little bit under control. So, uh, you know, there are a few little minor problems here and there, but not, nothing, you know, too big that uh, one cannot uh, handle. And uh, today we are witnessing, of course, uh, the counting of the votes. And I suppose it's a style of uh, the ECZ uh, to, to create some kind of an anxiety or, you know, uh, in, in, in people. But uh, for me, I think, uh, and anyone that has a cell phone and you care to phone around, you'll find that, uh, you know, uh, both parties, uh, I'm talking about PFE and uh, UPND, uh, are more or less it's a flip of a coin right now. You know, who could go to State House and, you know, who's not going to State House. Uh, the Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa, COMESA, has commended Zambians for the maturity they have exhibited during the election period. COMESA Head of Observer Mission in Zambia, Ambassador Dr. Simbi Mubaka, says the January 2015 by-election has marked another important milestone in the consolidation of democracy in Zambia and Africa as a whole. He says the people of Zambia have demonstrated maturity in the way they have managed the peaceful transition following the demise of the late president, Michael Sata. Dr. Mubaka says the commission has noted that the voter registration used was that of 2011, saying this is due to the financial constraints that the Electoral Commission of Zambia faces. Important. The conduct of this election will go a long way in contributing to sustainable social and economic development in the country. For the second time in the history of multi-party democracy, the people of Zambia have demonstrated maturity in managing peaceful transition following the untimely demise of the incumbent president, His Excellency the late Michael Chilufia Sata. The 90 days transition required by the Constitution leading to the 20th January 2015 by-election is also in line with democratic principles outlined in the African Charter for Democracy, Elections and Governance. The COMESA mission commends Zambia, which is among the uh, uh, only very few states that have already ratified the Charter. And COMESA mission observers say the procedures for polling stations were adhered to by polling assistants in all constituencies. Dr. Mbako says the layout of polling stations had generally permitted the free flow of voters and had safeguarded the secrecy of the ballots. The COMESA commission says they have not recorded any incidences of malpractice and the elections were free and fair. The COMESA observers were in five provinces to monitor the elections. The voting process took place in generally transparent manner as, as witnessed by commercial observers. Political party agents and citizen observers were present in most polling stations. However, not all political parties were represented in all political stations, uh, polling stations uh, visited. The procedures for polling were adhered to by polling officials who demonstrated professionalism in all polling stations observed. The officials observed, uh, the officials provided assistance to voters who needed guidance. 
Before we take a break, the headlines once again. Observer missions in Zambia happy with political environment. Remain calm, Dante Sodas advises Zambians. Edgar Lungo's PF leads in 90 constituencies counted. Do stay tuned. all your favorite hats at the same time? Well, we wouldn't either. That is why we suggest you use only what you need. Switch off all electrical appliances and lights in a newsroom. Remember, use only what you need and save power today. Switch and save. Zesco, powering the nation. What's your name? Let me talk to you for just a minute. Where you live and what you like to do? Apple Max, baby. You need to give me Apple Max, baby. Okay, I'm just trying to get with someone real because you look so free. So let's chill. Have a drink with a guy like me. Apple Max, baby. You need to give me Apple Max, baby. A quality product from Californian Beverages. Thank you for staying tuned. We continue with the news. Heritage Party President Godfrey Meander has expressed concern over the, sh the shifting of polling stations to other places. Brigadier General Meander says it is a source of concern that polling stations are being shifted without concern. He asks that people need to be told when there is a shift of a polling station or any changes. Brigadier Meander said this at the Mulungushi Conference Center in Lusaka. He appealed to the ECZ to ensure that people are told and updates of anything taken during the process of elections. TV, one of my officers, officials reported that the polling station had been shifted without notification. This was brought to my attention on the very morning of the voting and that your people were going around with a megaphone announcing the change. We are not complaining, my lady, we just bring it to your attention that this happened in Kapiri and my officials were advised to go to the conflict resolution team and report the matter. A young political analyst, Lonnie Tatila, has asked people not to trust any organization as the country continues to wait for election results. Mr. Tatila says people know that some people in these non-governmental organizations have taken sides on political issues to hold wings Zambians. He adds that it is worrying that some NGOs are taking wrong sides and misleading others on how to vote. Mr. Tatila indicates that most people are bringing division in the nation because of that they have taken. He was speaking in an interview with Prime TV. Mr. Tatila has called for people to stop trusting certain institutions because people leading these institutions are seeking jobs. To call upon Zambians to trust nobody about these elections, it's only the ACC that should be trusted. Because trusting institutions, especially some of these NGOs, we know what they're up to. We've seen in the past where each government, when it changes, 
probably you find people from different uh, non-government organizations uh, are appointed into foreign missions. So we should be aware in our mind that some of these institutions are actually are just there for job for job seeking. So it's important for us to trust. This is at this point, let's not to trust anyone. And uh, we are aware that uh, uh, TIZ has come up with their own PBT, but it's important that we look forward to the ECZ one. Because this one, they are just trying to mislead the public, and actually what, what it is that the TIZ should be responsible if any young person is going to be involved in any fighting. Government has accorded the late former Lusaka province minister and diplomat Elas Chipimo Senior a state funeral. Acting President Guy Scott says in line with this declaration, one day of national mourning will be observed on the day the late Mr. Chipimo Senior will be buried. In a statement issued by Secretary to the Cabinet, Roland Musiska, Dr. Scott says Mr. Chipimo's remains will be flown from South Africa where he died last Sunday after an illness. The body arrived at Kenneth Kaunda International Airport in Lusaka today. Dr. Scott says government is working on the funeral program of the late Mr. Chipimo and the details of the funeral arrangements will be announced soon. Funeral gathering is at late Mr. Chipimo's residence at plot number 4 87A Leopards Hill Road, New Kasama in Lusaka. We now take our second and final break, but do join me for the rest of the news after this. Apple Max. Take it to the max. What makes the new Yo-Yo Chipsy so unique? 100% natural ingredients. Nothing artificial. Welcome back, and now for the rest of the news. An international tribunal should be set up to investigate war crimes in the Central African Republic, United Nations rights investigators have said. The recommendation on Wednesday by the International Tribunal Commission of Inquiry on the Central African Republic followed an inquiry report released earlier this month which concluded that war crimes and crimes against humanity had been committed over the past two years in the region. The investigators traced the need for international judges, saying that without them the need to render decisions on serious crimes would lead to the creation of an ineffectual tribunal which will give the appearance of providing justice. UN investigators warned that without proper attention, the situation in the Central African Republic could spiral into a genocide. There has been a turning point in the Ebola crisis with cases falling in the three affected countries World Health Organization officials have said. Just eight cases were detect detected in Liberia in the last week, down from a peak of 500 a week in September, Guinea and Sierra Leone have also seen falls. The World Health Organization said the figures were the most promising since the outbreak started, but it continues to urge caution and to highlight the need to find those who had contact with Ebola patients. The largest outbreak of Ebola in human history has infected 21,724 people and killed 8,641, largely in just three countries, Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Guinea. And for more international news, we monitored Al Jazeera.
And Yemen's president has accepted demands from Houthi rebels to end a growing political crisis. The agreement comes as a leaked tape appears to show his predecessor, Ali Abdullah Saleh, has been plotting with the rebels to undermine the government. Crisis talks on Ukraine have led to an agreement to pull back heavy weaponry from a demarcation line defined in last year's Minsk peace plan. The U.S. Secretary of State, John Kerry, has accused Russia of a blatant land grab. We're particularly concerned by signs that the Russian-backed separatists are attacking a full-scale initiative against the city of uh, Debaltsebe and in an attempt to obviously gain control of a very significant rail juncture, uh, and that is in blatant violation uh, of the Minsk Agreement, uh, the September 19th Minsk Agreement ceasefire. Japan says it's looking at all possibilities to secure the release of two of its nationals taken hostage by the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. A government spokesperson says Japan is trying to negotiate with hostage takers. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, who returned from a six-day tour of the Middle East, has promised not to give in to terrorism. ISIL is threatening to kill the hostages unless a $200 million ransom is paid. UN-sponsored peace talks on Libya have collapsed after one of the country's two rival governments walked out. The General National Congress has accused the internationally recognized parliament based in Tobruk of orchestrating new violence. The United Nations launched this new round of talks in Geneva last week. The European Central Bank is expected to announce a bond-buying program to boost the Eurozone's flagging economy. It hopes that what's known as quantitative easing will improve the European economy and confidence in the euro. The leader of Germany's anti-Islamization movement has resigned after a photo emerged of him posing as Adolf Hitler. Lutz Bachmann appeared on the front page of the daily newspaper Bild. Ousted Thai Prime Minister Yin Lakshinawat has given her closing statements during a hearing of an impeachment vote against her. A military-appointed legislator will rule on her involvement in a controversial rice subsidy scheme on Friday. International stories will now come to the end of our main news. But as we go, we leave you the headlines. Observer missions in Zambia, happy with political environment. Remain calm, Dante Soda's advises Zambians. Ed Galungo's PF leads in 90 constituencies that have been counted. In international news, United Nations says international court needed for Central African Republic war crimes. Well, thank you so much for being with us. This has been Gwen Wheeler, and do enjoy the rest of our programs. Hey girl, what's your name? Let me talk to you for just a minute. Where you live and what you like to do? Apple Max, baby. You need to give me Apple Max, baby. Okay, I'm just trying to get with someone real because you look so free. So let's chill. Have a drink with a guy like me. Apple Max, baby. You need to give me Apple Max, baby. A quality product from Californian Beverages. favorite hats at the same time? Well, 
we wouldn't either. That is why we suggest you use only what you need. Switch off all electrical appliances and lights in a newsroom. Remember, use only what you need and save power today. Switch and save. Zesco, powering the nation.